I would like to continue the session and invite Mr. Darren Brunt, Engineer and Director of Pre-Sales at Talent, which will host a presentation on uh, IoT and smart cities. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming back, everybody. Really appreciate it. So um, welcome to this session, um, formerly known as the gra Graveyard Shift. <laughs> it's my job to try and entertain and keep you engaged for the next 30 minutes. And hopefully I will by talking about a subject which is likely to impact us all over the years to come. IoT is all around us. Uh, we participate in IoT processes, both consciously and subconsciously, throughout our daily life. Uh, take your journey to this event today. The tube train you traveled on, the tap-in, tap-out barrier that you went through, uh, the mobile phone that you're carrying, the wearable device on your wrist, all of these are generating IoT events, which ultimately you know, can serve some purpose and value. So we're all part of an IoT system, but we're only starting to understand some of the benefits of using this information. So what's this got to do with smart cities? Well, smart cities um, have the potential really to change our lives um, at many levels, creating you know, things like less pollution, optimized parking, uh, better health systems, edu enhanced education, and enabling energy savings in buildings. Real-time information and the IoT um, basically possess the power to turn this vision into reality. However, most organizations are not currently building a data architecture and data platform that will enable some of these changes to occur in the future, which will leave them somewhat isolated in terms of participating in the new, new world. As part of this session, uh, we're basically going to introduce uh, a, an illustration from Johnson Controls, which is one of our customers, who will showcase what they are able to do to equip organizations to deliver smart buildings within smart cities using solutions um, to generate the connected building. And the example we're going to be using is a quite famous building, uh, the one Albert Key building in Cork Island. Well, I guess it's famous if you're Irish. So here's the challenge. The development of smart cities is going to hugely, uh, become hugely important over the coming years as urbanization puts increased pressure on existing cities and infrastructure. The United Nations predicts that by 2050, around 70% of the world's population will be concentrated in urban areas. Compare that to 54% just two years ago, and that's a seismic shift. So as a result, city authorities and all the associated uh, infrastructure will need to take significant steps to address this population growth, address issues around safety, traffic, pollution, commerce, culture, and all the other challenges that are around uh, growth of these urban areas. So what's, what's the opportunity? Well, the opportunities in front of us are fairly stark, to be quite frank. City leaders around the globe have already embraced the concept of smart cities with great enthusiasm. In fact, a recent report from research firm Navigant shows that the global smart city technology market is almost doubling in size uh, over the next few years, culminating in, a, in an overall investment by 2023 of around $174 billion. So that's a, that's a big and emerging market. The latest research by Gartner also suggests that you know, smart cities um, used 1.1 billion connected devices in 2014, and that's going to spiral to 9.7 billion by 2020, which isn't far away. To complement this explosive growth in connected devices, IDC predicts that these devices will actually be responsible for generating around $1.9 trillion worth of impact on the global economy uh, in terms of service wraparounds you know, for, these, for this information. And since sensors and other connected devices generate data, the amount of addressable and actionable IoT data is set to grow eightfold you know, to 120, uh, sorry, 180 zettabytes by 2025. So you can see there's, a, there's an explosion of data and explosion of opportunity um, occurring. And with that in mind, companies will need to plan to be agile and flexible around the data storage and processing architectures to stay relevant as these data assets shape the way that future businesses need to operate. Cities also need to adapt to safely managed increased urbanization and the challenges that that poses on the infrastructure. So, oops. So what are the, what are the value drivers that really uh, are enabling uh, and embracing smart cities? Well, really the first is really about digital transformation. You know, um, I've been hearing it all morning. Our expectations as citizens and users is always on the increase. We have expectations that we want you know, information at our fingertips. And those services that don't offer such a capability are likely to be usurped by digital leaders who do. In fact, research shows today that the gap between digital leaders and digital followers is growing. And it's likely to make the difference between survivors and failures as we move forwards. 
The second is really around effective citizen engagement. So you know, we all want targeted content you know, based on my particular you know, uh, demograph or geography, like you know, the next bus to arrive at this bus stop, the fact that my planned, my usual train on a Friday evening is somewhat delayed tonight, um, flash offers as I move past relevant stores, et cetera. So you know, we all expect you know, information to be effectively targeting us. And by delivering this more relevant information, we can all benefit from better data. And thirdly, um, the system of you know, IoT sensors and real-time analytics, I think, poses an opportunity for the market. We're only starting to explore what the combination of IoT information and real-time applications and analytics will deliver. Um, Uber would be a classic example of an early adopter of this. And you know, it's these kind of organizations that not only disrupt existing markets, but create new markets by combining IoT data and uh, real-time applications. So, if we look at what we need to address, we need to address faster data, better data, and look at new data opportunities to support this explosion in growth. And in the early days, you know, the world was easy, right? Uh, we had on-premise applications and everything was you know, quite contained and, and, and manageable from a data flow and integration perspective. Introduce you know, a new dimension of hybrid architectures where cloud resources, SaaS applications, iPaaS platforms all, all form part of operational infrastructure for companies, introducing new challenges around security, authorization to data, and management of data between on-premise and cloud. Introduce yet another dimension where we look at you know, the, the impact to customers and, and suppliers. How do we want to manifest ourselves as a series of services or capabilities to those who we serve? And the challenges around making that secure and reliable and, and their user journey to be effective. And finally, uh, to add to the puzzle, uh, the new emergence of unstructured and semi-structured data from computer-generated events that now augment our data estate. There are, I don't doubt whether there's one organization out here today that is not looking at augmenting or enriching their data with third-party information that's been gathered from public or private sources around IoT data and streams. So this is the data ecosystem that we're now faced with today and some of the complexity around managing variety, veracity, volume, and velocity of data, i.e. it's the big data challenge. So what are these challenges around big data? Well. In theory, um, you know, it's complex technology. You know, the technology required to support you know, storage and processing of big data has traditionally been quite difficult, such as Hadoop and Spark. And it's true that these, you know, uh, these technologies are becoming more and more strategic, but actually the ability for IT to respond and um, deliver in a timely fashion to meet needs is, is part of the problem. Limited access. Well, you know, we'll build a data lake and they'll come. Well, <laughs> The reality is that building a data lake is actually the easy part of this ecosystem, okay? Despite some of the complex technologies, landing data into a lake and aggregating data into a lake is easy. But democratizing and governing access to that data lake to make the information relevant and pertinent to those users and roles who need it is the difficult part. And by managing authorization and policies to help drive the value from the right information to the right people is part of the challenge. IT struggle to fast uh, to deliver fast enough. Well, you know, complex technologies and delivery time pressures often force organisations to make tactical behaviours and moves, often seen as you know hand coding. We will we'll write something in Spark or Python or some scripting language just to get us over the hump. However, the pitfalls of tactical hand coding are starting to emerge as companies try and scale out that activity and realise soon that this existing approach is unmanageable and not very flexible to change for scaling out in the future. So how do I get to the value of this nirvana earlier? Well, most organizations need to look at how they derive value from big data projects by changing their approach and looking for innovative, uh, highly productive development practices and platforms that abstract a lot of the technology complexity, lower the skills barrier of entry, and provide an agile delivery model for new big data projects. So once we have this big data thing, you know, how do I exploit it? How can I get more from it? Well, there are a number of kind of traditional uh, mechanisms that we see uh, in the market, whether that's kind of you know, trying to make big data faster by removing latency and using you know, in-memory techniques to exploit data in real time, move more and more away from batch processing to micro batch to streaming architectures to help you know, reduce uh, the time it takes to achieve actionable insight from this information. 
to analyze before acting, to, to provide a point of reference, because a, a, you know, a data point in isolation you know, can cause uh, the, the incorrect behavior. So by looking at things like uh, Lambda architecture, by looking at historical patterns, historical flows, and putting into context the current situation helps us understand what we should do in this particular situation. So you know, the, the volume of people going through the tube network on a Monday morning is very different to a Sunday morning, for example. Machine learning. So uh, you know, we've heard much about it today, about what this new-ish technology can help us do. The reality is, is that machine learning and AI is not really a new concept, but the accessibility of machine learning and AI is starting to lower. We don't any longer need people with you know, 30, 40 years of mathematical experience to start exploiting machine learning and capabilities in these models. So we help turn you know, data into more predict prescriptive and predictive analytics. And finally, there's the challenge around you know, platform portability. You know, the only certainty that we have in life is change around technology and the rate of innovation. So you know, today's Hadoop distributions will be tomorrow's cloud platforms. Tomorrow's cloud platforms may be the next year's mainframe platforms. Who knows? But the reality is that change is certain. So you know, ensuring that you have portability of your platform is key. So it'd be remiss of me to be up here for, as someone from Talent and not you know, try and paint the, the journey to Nirvana. So, at Talon, we basically provide a modern uh, open source platform that enables our customers to have a single holistic platform for addressing all of these integration and data management challenges. The ability to ingest structured, semi-structured, unstructured data in a consistent way as part of an ingestion framework. The ability to perform a software delivery lifecycle across this entire estate with consistency, regardless of whether I'm looking at you know, fast data or slow data. The ability for me to um, literally embed data quality analytics in, in the design, look at the way in which we might use metadata for data discovery in our data lake and help us navigate the logical uh, environment that we have rather than the physical. The ability for us to be supporting all of these different types of flows to all sorts of different outcomes. Because ultimately, you know, ingestion of data and compute you know, performs some kind of outcome. And that outcome might be for analytics or reporting or indeed for propagation of downstream systems. And to be able to do that in a single platform that you can host in the cloud, on-premise, or a combination of the two really starts to open up you know, the opportunity for how people address big data and IoT you know, from a single strategic platform. So if we look at a traditional end-to-end -end, um, platform for IoT, it really starts at the left-hand side here with you know, IoT and sensors generating events and, and information. Typically, there's some sort of capturing or persistence layer where those events are created and then streamed into some form of processing platform or architecture. Now, increasingly, um, we're seeing you know, organizations want to create a single uh, common processing and storage architecture that deals not just with the traditional batch feeds of information, providing a baseline of information, but also providing access to the speed layer, the fast data that's entering our organization. And that, in conjunction with the pre-computed views on historical data, give us that point of reference so that we can make informed decisions and informed sets of data. And ultimately, you know, providing some sort of query interface to this you know, helps drive business decision and business insight. So from a scope point of view, um, this is where talent fits. So again, helping, address, uh, helping organizations address the whole ingestion, compute, and storage capabilities to drive next generation data architectures. But don't listen to me. Um, let's listen to a, a customer testimonial for, from Johnson Controls. So um, Johnson Controls is a global, uh, diverse technology and industrial uh, organization um, with 120,000 employees that create intelligent buildings, um, if energy efficient solutions, integrated infrastructure, and next generation transportation systems that effectively work seamlessly together to help drive smart buildings and smart city concepts. Okay, let me just show you a little video here. Every day in this smart building, 2,000 lights are controlled from one central management system, illuminating 170,000 square feet of space. 320 people arrive at five access card readers, informing two chefs how much food to prepare for the day ahead. Six smart lifts automatically open, taking staff to their floor securely, saving 11 kilowatt hours of energy, 150 fire extinguishers, 100 smoke detectors, 15 fire panels, and two suppression systems protect the building against the threat of smoke and flame. 86 cameras secure the building's traffic and identity management, while 100 control points are accessed 3,200 times. One management platform centralizes it all, 
17 meeting rooms are booked and secured through email calendar systems linked to access control. 150 vents manage 21,000 liters of conditioned air per second, heated or cooled as needed by Metasys software. 200 liters of rainfall is collected for reprocessing into the plumbing system. Only 1.1 watts of energy per meter squared escapes through glazing. Two environmental arrays measure wind speed, sound, light, CO2, and humidity. 2,000 car parking spaces are monitored across five car parks, predicting free spaces over the following week. An IoT platform ingests 290 data points per second. 82 live bus routes and 15 train schedules are sent to the cell phones of building occupants as they prepare their journeys home. In one Albert Key Cork, Ireland's smartest building is powered by Johnson Controls technology and building management systems, accelerating what a smarter, safer, more connected building can do. Okay, so a shameless plug for Johnson Controls and um, effectively the use of Talon to support that whole IoT ingestion and management uh, data architecture. So, how do I... Oops, sorry, get out of there. Okay, so let's just take a very quick look at around, around what that platform actually provides. So um, at the left-hand side here, we have ingestion points, both from traditional systems as well as you know, IoT sensors and all sorts of external platforms. An ingestion framework, which basically normalizes data and enables uh, that, those streams of data to hit the Azure data lake in this particular case, and surface up different types of um, use cases on top of this data lake. So at the front end here, really the, you know, the storage of uh, big data in its raw form, and then using compute on top of that data, again with some machine learning capabilities to start helping optimize power solutions. You know, when the temperature outside is this, and it's, uh, you know, the flow of traffic is this, and all of those different events culminate to help us optimize how we route power and, uh, and air conditioning and everything around the building. And finally, really, uh, in, in terms of the reporting, reporting and analytics layer, how we then you know, aggregate some of that data together, provide sand pits for data scientists to start building models, new insights you know, from that lake of information to help drive you know, the analytics and reporting tier. So it really is about you know, providing a, a ubiquitous capability of uh, managing ingestion and use of data throughout the platform to help drive you know, the concept, in this case, of a connected building. But let's have some fun. Okay. What I want to do now is actually get a bit of audience participation, okay? I want to show you how easy it is, relatively easy it is, to build a real-time IoT application, okay? What you're about to see is all developed in Talent and basically will enable us to show how we can combine capturing IoT events uh, with uh, the use of real-time analytics. So we all talk about IoT, you know, what it can do, but in this particular case, we're going to collect, aggregate, and categorize sensor data in real-time from your mobile phones if you're up for it, okay? So in your phone is a particular chip which measures all of the accelerometer information on your phone. So this is not geo-tracking. So the one thing I will tell you, we are not tracking you geographically, okay? There's a little chip in your, all your smartphones that measures the movement of the phone, not the location, just the movement, okay? And what I'd like you to do, if possible, is uh, we'll register you with a real-time application on your smartphones and we'll analyze that information in real time and show it to you in real time through, through the platform. So what's actually happening here? You know, the, the technical stuff at the, at, the, at the back end is really, you know, there are events generating your phone which are being pushed to a receiving service. That receiving service is sending this information into a Kafka queue, so a streaming architecture. Um, we're then applying machine learning and classification to that information to determine your status. So by having trained the machine learning previously about what stationary is, what walking is, what running is, then we can basically look at your events and determine what we think you're doing. Okay? And then we're going to visualize that. You just about see that. Visualize that at the back end in terms of um, all sorts of signatures. Uh, this is called a gate signature that looks at your particular pattern, the way you walk, the way you move your... You know, ideally, you'd be walking, but I guess you're going to be shaking your hands. Okay? So the idea is that we can track and analyze your particular patterns of particular users. So who's up for it? Who's got a smartphone that's switched on and wants to participate? The more, the more that you do, the better we will be off. Okay, so if you can point your smartphones at uh, iot.talon.live, Okay, and hopefully you'll see a little pop-up screen like this. And if you can enter that, uh, that uh, session code, which is WWSKEY4XXRAY, so WSKEY4XRAY, 
hit the submit button. You should be presented with a little panel just asking for your name and, and email address. Doesn't have to be real, don't worry. Everyone with me so far? Yeah? Yeah? And finally, if you hit the submit button there, you should get a little screen on your mobile that looks a little like this. Anyone got that so far? Yep. yep. Wiggle your phones rapidly or slowly or whatever you want to do. OK, so what I'm going to do now is go to our, uh, excuse me, where's it gone? <laughs> Hang on a second, I'll be with you. Where's my mouse gone? Sorry, I've lost my mouse. Oh, it's over there. Let me just stop the presentation a second. Uh, right, that's better. All right, let me get back to here. And what I'll do, wow. Okay, so we've got Dory, Selena, Oli, Tej, Lucas, Dagmara, James, Abed, J, T, and A. Some of you are, if you look at the legend here, some of you are just uh, you know, jiggling. Uh, Ollie's, Ollie's been a fast and furious for a few seconds back there. So again, what we're seeing here is effectively near real-time analytics of capturing devices from your phones, okay? All done in a single platform that enables the, the uplift, the streaming, the calculations, and the prediction about what it is that you're actually doing. And probably more interestingly, if we look at uh, gate signatures, you'll see how people are clustered. So if, you're, if you were really truly running or whatever, you'd see probably different accelerometer uh, versions of this information. But essentially, because we're all static and probably just giving it a slight wiggle, you know, we're all concentrated around the variance in terms of accelerometer information. But what you can see here is that we are literally, so again, if I put the leaderboard up, um, whoever you know, is on the leaderboard, if you kind of start wiggling furiously and see how long it takes to see you know, that reaction in the actual plan, so hopefully we'll see some red if people go really furiously. Maybe we're not furious enough. Don't worry, you won't break your phones. Okay, so maybe, oh, hang on. No, maybe I need to scroll down and see if there's, okay. So, we, oh, we've got loads of people on actually. Wow, Pavel, Gilberto, okay. so. Okay, so the idea here is that if you're looking at your individual line, maybe you can see the differences that you're, you're making in terms of how you wiggle your phone and, uh, and how the analytics is playing out, okay? But just a very, very simple example about how we can capture events that you're generating all of the time. You never know it, right? You're generating these events all of the time. We're simply capturing them here and manifesting them in some way, shape, or form from a reporting and analytics basis. Fun over. All right, so who are we? So Talon basically is a, an open source uh, platform for driving big data projects. So what do we do? We help organizations basically exploit big data assets, IoT infrastructure, using uh, high productivity graphical tools without the need for, for coding. Um, we're helping organizations basically drive you know, the agility in their, in their business by unlocking the potential of data lakes. You know, looking at how you can democratize access to this information, share this information, compute this information, and calculate from this information. We're looking at how we can drive you know, power and agility from use of cloud infrastructure. Everything I just showed you was hosted on AWS, um, not a single kind of you know, local presence here except for you guys on your phones. And also how you know, self-service and governance. So the, the, the role of self-service and how we provide access to this information for individuals and, and right for purpose uh, information to individuals is key. Okay, that's all I wanted to do or say in terms of the, the presentation. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight about you know, what the art of the possible is with uh, IoT and, uh, and uh, data capture and computation. And I'm open to uh, a few questions. Stun silence. Questions? Hi, Darren. Hi. Really enjoy that. Uh, <laughs> are you sp any sectors you are focusing on? Uh, you gave an example of a smart building. Uh, any other sectors you're working with? So yeah, as, as an organization, we're not uh, particularly vertical focused, or, um, but we have basically, uh, for instance, if I look at pharma, you know, we're helping large pharmaceutical organizations basically do um, reverse clinical trials, as we call it. So 
organizations that have held you know, clinical trial information for 15, 20 years and have never really had one place to put all that data and really rerun research across clinical trial data. That'd be one example. Uh, we're helping large banks to effectively try and get to the point of fraud detection at the point of sale. So at the point of your contactless payment being made, you basically have a two second window to accept or decline that transaction. Okay, so many banks are trying to get to the point now is with any degree of probability, can we actually stop the transaction rather than repair the transaction later by you know, compensating individuals? Um, when it comes to uh, gaming and betting platforms, so we're very um, big in gaming and betting platforms, uh, outwitting the machine. So um, um, lots of um, basically any company with the word betting in the UK, you can guarantee is a talent client. Um, but basically what we're helping them do is look at machine learning patterns. How do you behave in Session. You know, what is it that you do um, if you're, you know, if you have a propensity to abandon a game at a particular series of events? You know, maybe we'll upsell to you just before that event, you know, occurs the next time. So, all sorts of different, you know, sort of um, intelligence patterns that we're helping organisations with. First utility. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for, for this. Um, the is very great. Uh, you think you, you forgot to mention is that Talent is a French company. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, and now just a serious question. About this smart building, which is very great, the video you, sh you show us, um, do you know where, where, what is the return of investment of this? I think it's smart, it's great, everyone love it, but uh, what is the time when they get back to the money they invest in the, in the building? So um, I think one, one Albert Key has only been operational for about eight months. Um, there is a business plan behind the building, naturally. Um, I don't think we as a, as a software vendor are privy to some of the actual gains of that business plan. Um, but certainly um, the investment in talent to offset the generation, uh, you know, the savings they were anticipated was a very easy uh, business case to align. So one can only assume that we're a fraction of what the actual gains uh, or, or potential are of this building. Um, but it just serves to, to the purpose here is really JCI have built a platform that enables that architecture that you've just seen to be repeated time and time and time again for smart buildings. And so the idea is that, you know, they may have a different series of ingestion, they may have a different heat control system, they may have a different X, Y, Z, but the framework is now consistent. And JCI are rolling out this template now to all of the smart buildings that they get engaged with. And they, they do everything from, you know, the construction to the, the, the kind of, you know, putting the, the furnishings in as well. Okay. Thank you for your time, we appreciate it.